Hey guys, welcome back. We're at episode eight and we're going to be doing some tramp, eh, transplanting. I can actually speak today. Uh, hey Rory, how's it going? Or should I say grumpy? Bonus man. So how are you guys doing today? I hope everybody's having a fabulous day. A couple of days after the American Thanksgiving. I hope everybody's uh, recovered and had a fantastic weekend. So we're just going to jump right into it, guys. You guys know that uh, I got a bag of soil from Black Swallow Living Soils. And we put that into uh, five five-gallon grow bags. Hey, Victor. Um, and then I, I had added biology because I had added the mix that I, I do want as a foliar actually into the soil to help moisten the soil. Then I added a bunch more water after that, and I've kept them moist uh, while we were waiting for today. Um, now, just to go over what the, the plants are doing, uh, hey, Cake, uh, I'm going to show you guys some images that I took today. Uh, but of course, I don't. Uh, let's see here. We're going to go with that one. And now I have to open the image. Of course, you know, like I should have had this done for you guys already. But I didn't. So I did get myself a, a larger screen in here, guys. So hopefully I'll be able to actually uh, see the comments that much easier. So we're going to go like that. And then we are going to share. Oh, okay. And there's my pussycat Meowser. Hey, Boulder. So, of course, that's not the uh, the image that we're going to be looking at. He's just a cute cat. Now, you guys know I planted a whole bunch of different seeds. Um, now, let me make sure that I have them right for who they are. This is Diacon Radish. And uh, we're actually going to be using some of this today uh, as a green mulch because I don't really have much for mulch material. Um, so what's that going to do for us? Well, it's going to really do two things for us. Uh, hi, Lily. Um, it's going to give us the mulch, of course, but it's also going to add in biology. The biology that the mung bean carries in its own cell structure is what's going to be added into our soil. Now, that is going to start breaking down the mung bean once I cut it and add it in as my green mulch. But we're going to get that benefit because that's the biology that is adapted to deal with what the mung bean draws up from the soil structure. Hey, Ghetto, David, how's it going? So. We had the mung bean, and uh, there is our lone sunflower. It is just so alone in there, but it is starting to grow, guys, and uh, we're just going to keep that growing. Uh, we want the biology of that sunflower to really take root in the, the soil structure of that particular pot. Then we've got uh, the ruby beets. Um, you can see that there's not a whole heck of a lot. Now, consider, guys, these seeds are eight, nine years old. So we didn't get a whole lot of germination on some of this stuff. And some, like the mung, uh, like the uh, diacon radish, did really good. Uh, this is the fenugreek. And then we've got the green mung beans, which are actually coming on very nicely. And then uh, these are mustard seeds, uh, the yellow mustard. And uh, then what do we got here? This is supposed to be on onions. Yeah, bunching onions. So you can see them just coming up. And you can see there's other plants in there, guys. I'm not sure what those are. Um, but we're going to, uh, to let them grow. When they do start to overtake and overshadow, we are going to be cutting them down. Um and laying them in there for green mulch to help keep the soil moist. Okay, then we've got uh, the Gusto Italian 
uh, Italiana uh, carrots. Then we've got uh, Royal Centenni. I think I'm pronouncing it right, but probably not. Uh, those are carrots as well. Then we've got uh, more carrots. We've got the Scarlet uh, Nantes. And then the last carrot is the Tender Long Imperator. And then, of course, we have our control, which you can see our control is kind of doing pretty good here. We, we've got um, a, a lot of stuff happening here. We've got this plant, which I'm not really that sure on what this plant is. Um, we'll find out. I'll, I'll have to take a picture of it and put it in and, and uh, try to find out. But it's coming along really nicely, uh, whatever it is. Yes, Lily, we do have definitely a real mix in these bags. And it's a mix of biology, guys. And that's why we've done this. Um, hey, Ballista. Uh, we want to create as much biology and different varieties of biology. And each seed has literally billions of biology on the surface and inside of it. So when it, it germinates, that biology has been put into the soil because that's the biology the mother plant gave to it uh, so that it could have a long, healthy life. So now we're going to be getting into the cannabis. Okay. And uh, tell me, I'm not sure. Let's see. Uh, where did I start? I would have started down there. So let's see. That should be uh, an SFVOG's Kush. And then we've got um, this one here. So that is, oh, that wasn't an SV's Kush. I got to turn around. Hold on, guys. Let me get the stickers right here. So that first one, let's go back to that first one because I want to make sure I, I know which one is which here. So those were at the end like that. So that's actually uh, one of John's Medis. Um, one of the strains, let me just, uh, we've got um, Joe Brand 91 cross of the Medi and we got Death Bubba. So we're not sure if this is the Death Bubba or the Joe Brand, Brand cross uh, with the Medi, but that's one of the Medis uh, Kush seeds that John uh, sent me. Yes, it is actually looking really nice, although we have some problems on some of the other ones. Um, now, this one should be the actual Medi, okay? Uh, it's a shorter, broader leaf plant, uh, and that's uh, the Medi Kush, an S1. And then on the end, that's an SFD OG Kush. And you can see how the leaves are not liking things. They're really light on the, the edges. Let me get uh, closer in here. You can see where in here, in this area, you can't really see my mouse too well, but it's really light colored. So we're missing, like when I ran these uh, through uh, the GrowDoc app, uh, it was telling me on some I had a phosphorus deficiency, on some I had um, a magnesium deficiency. And one, it even told me I had thrips, and I don't have any thrips. So uh, not 100% accurate, but very good. Now, this one, I believe, was, the, uh, was telling me it was the phosphorus. And you can see on there the, the uh, tip burn, like, totally cooked. And that wasn't like that yesterday. This has been uh, in, in, you know, about a 20-hour period uh, that this has happened. But you can see the burning. You can see the tip burn on this one right here. Let me get uh, a little bit closer. You can see that tip burn. You can see the secondary uh, tips here burning as well. So we're going to be looking to uh, have get that corrected. And then uh, this one would have been the other SV. And you can see it's having the same problem where those leaves really aren't that nice and green. The top ones uh, up on the top up here aren't doing too bad. But you can see a little bit of deficiencies in the edging. But these ones are really light colored. So we really need to get these babies transplanted um, and go from there because... Uh, 
they're they're in need now, right? So that's what we're doing today. Um, and no, I have not added any magnesium at all. I don't uh, use CalMag. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, through the foliar feeding. I'm adding uh, a, a bunch of different things. So if we're missing magnesium, we have to see what biology and what plants produce magnesium. And then I'm going to be planting those particular plants uh, in a grow bag. And I'm going to be starting to grow those out so that I can get the biology that is mining that magnesium from the soil structure to give to that plant. So say it's, um, oh, let's just use barley for an example. Um, I'm not sure exactly which plants pull up the most magnesium. That's something I've got to research. But say barley, if it's the barley that's pulling up that magnesium, I want to grow out some barley. I want to use that as a cover right um the chop and drop basically and then i'm getting the magnesium that the biology from that plant has drawn up in the plant uh, uh, cells i guess would be the uh, the right term and then i've got the biology in there to break that out of that cell structure and be able to give it to the biology in my cannabis plant that is going to be using it and I'm adding in that mix of biology into the soil structure. And that biology's job, you know, for its parent plant was to pull those um, compounds out of the soil structure. So uh, from then, uh, appreciate you keeping it real. Yeah, I'm not going to hide anything, guys. Um, that's why this is the R&D Grow. Uh, I'm as honest as the day is long, if not a little bit uh, more honest than the day, because in the wintertime, it gets pretty short, you know, down here. But uh, just saying, I'm not going to hide anything. If I'm having a problem, I'm going to show you guys the problem, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing to remedy the problem without grabbing a bottle. Um, I am using uh, the water-soluble calcium, the water-soluble calcium phosphate, um, the fish amino acid. Uh, etc. that I've made all this stuff myself, right? Um, I'm not going out and purchasing things now. I have been uh, gifted and um, things like uh, from uh, Quad Ag. They've sent me their foliar, their humic acid, and uh, their full, on, or full, oh my goodness, I can't talk today. Um, humic and, and fulvic. Oh, I always want to say it, it wrong, and then it's the wrong acid. I don't want to give you guys the wrong acid. But um, we're going to be making sure before we even take clones that our plants are healthy. Now, I personally, if that takes me uh, a month or two months or even three months to make sure that my plants are healthy before I cut those clones to take them to the next level, then that's how long it's going to take, guys. Um, this isn't a, a race to the end for me. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of companies out there that they have to flip, you know, they have to meet those deadlines. The R and D grow has no deadline. Um, the biggest thing that we're looking at in the future is I know a, a certain young lady that we're actually going to have on to one of our shows, um, who has a, an issue with, uh, epileptic seizures um she has trouble going out where you know anything that that's a flashing light color running water they'll set her off she's finding that the cannabis is taking care of that and this is research that's been going on for over 15 years we're continuing it and to microgreens and um other ways of consuming the very youngest of the plant okay uh, we're getting those hormones and those enzymes that are in the, you know, a, a sprout that we're not getting in a full grown cannabis plant. And those are helping her. She actually, uh, amazingly enough, was able to go out to a, a, a club where she, she loves to sing. So she was doing karaoke. They had flashing lights and it didn't actually set her off. It's 
And guys, believe me, for this young lady, that is amazing. Even just to get in the vehicle to drive to the club, she has to wear headsets, eyes. She has to be enclosed in uh, and sit on a special seat that doesn't give the vibrations of the road. So for her to be able to do that because of the use of these microgreens is an amazing, amazing thing. So what we're going to be doing, guys, um, because... I'm going to be consuming very little of this uh, material that once it's growing, we're going to be seeding. We're going to be making sure that we are um, having the pollen. We're going to be adding the pollen to make sure that uh, we're getting seeds. And then I'm going to be giving her these seeds so that she can do more research. They can find the ways that this is going to really, really help her and hopefully hundreds of thousands of other people suffering from epileptic seizures. But as I said, we're going to have uh, her and her mom on uh, amazing, uh, amazing people. But uh, anyway, uh, Mad Dog Epsom salts uh, week four to five for magnesium. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of different natural methodologies that we can use to add magnesium into the system. Like for our own bodies, we need calcium and magnesium combined so that we can, uh, the, the two bind together to come into the system. Now, I don't know that they, we have to worry too much about that in the plant structure. Uh, I haven't heard what really one way or the other. Um, I know they sell CalMag, you know, because it's a human thing, calcium, magnesium together. I'm not really 100% convinced it's a plant thing. Um I think it's just a, a <laughs> hate to say, it, a really good marketing tool. Okay, um, so uh, let's see. Gifted black swallow soil. Uh, can't wait to see how your plants react uh, when you transplant them into the larger pots. And and yeah, like I'm just in these tiny little little cups, guys. And uh, so we're going to be going into five gallon pots. Um, you know. There's a, a, a lot of things. It's, thank you, Lily, for being proud of me. Um, I'm proud of you as well uh, for what you do on the back end. You're, you're an amazing young woman, and uh, I couldn't do this without you. So thank you. Um, I don't know. We can't really tell, but uh, yeah, you can see just the one water root uh, sticking out. So when I started seeing the water roots a, a few days ago, uh, it is a good indication that the the roots uh, you need to do your transplanting. Okay, um, I don't use a lot of things that other people use. I, you know, we we planted these straight the seeds straight into the soil. We didn't, um, you know, sprout them out first, and there was reasons. And if you want to go back into the earlier episodes, you can see the reasons why I did that. But um, it's just for me, the more I learn, the more I learn, the more I learn, and I listen to many voices, like I suggest to you guys, um, we need that biology that's not only on the inside of that um, seed, but what's on the outside to really take over the soil system your plant is in, because that's the biology that the mother put into that seed to give her uh, daughter, son, the best chance at life. So, uh, yeah, I like that, Mad Dog. Yeah, definitely, right? Yes, Ken, bottles are for babies. Yeah. If these are my babies, okay, this is uh, uh, the man cave and I'm hanging out with my ladies, okay? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we, we don't need to, to go that route. Um, so, I'm not going to. So the, just to let you guys know, the R&D isn't going to go to, to bottle feeding. But um, so this is the Medi uh, or one of the Medis. This isn't the actual Medi. She's a shorter plant. So this is one of the uh, crosses. But uh, let's just see if we can pop her out uh, of this. Well, actually, we should probably prepare our pot first before I do that. So I'm going to switch the camera angle here. And you guys should be able to see that. Okay, perfect. 
So a lot of people have a lot of different methodologies for how they're doing this. A lot of guys, they're filling up their pot halfway. They're taking their plant, they're sticking in the middle, and then they're, you know, putting it around so it's nice and lofty, etc. You don't want to compact your soil. Okay. Now this soil uh, is nice and light and fluffy, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick out some soil, put it on the edges. So I'm not going to be compacting the soil that's down here any more than, you know, is absolutely necessary to dig the bit out. So we've got a nice little hole happening here. So we take our, our plant, we stick that in there and it's pretty much right up to where the soil is in this pot. Now you can see in there, um, I've trimmed off a little bit of the leaf structure from down in here and I've just put it in as a, a mulch layer right away, right? So should I be jealous? Yes, Lily, you should definitely be jealous of the ladies out here, okay? <laughs> just giving the, the wife a hard time. So all I'm gonna do, flip it over. Holy, that just pops right out of there. And you can see the, the root structure, it's all the way around. And you can see where we're starting to actually have too much root. So we definitely are just hitting the right time to be transplanting. So I'm just going to plop her in there. I'm going to wiggle her around so she's fairly snug. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the soil that I took out back in around so that we're basically level. I'm not going to be tapping the soil down too much. And basically, guys, that is it. That is the transplant. Now, this soil is moist. I have been keeping it nice and moist. And um, when I move it uh, her back into the grow, we will be, um, or I'll be putting in two cups of water in the tray on the bottom and allowing this to soak up. Okay, uh, tomorrow, uh, no, Tuesday, we're going to be doing the, the next foliar feed. Uh, so I'll be showing that it's, you know, pretty basic. But that's it for the transplanting of that one. I'm just going to do one more, guys. Um, I don't think it's something that, you know, uh, I need to do for the, the whole thing over and over again. Uh, hey, Jeff. Uh, so we're just going to do the actual Medi. So you can see she's a, a, a nice short plant. We'll get a good shot of her there. Now you can see the really nice broad leaves on her, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to just dig it out. Now the reason I'm not, uh, you know, making any excessive size of a hole is there's biology that's already in here starting to work starting to knit together the soil structure to form their homes okay and you have to consider that in the the soil those really beautiful you know clumps uh, if i can see you can't really tell but it, there's a little bit of of clumping already starting to happen you know, that's the glomulin that the biology is producing to stitch that soil structure together. They're making their own homes, their own, you know, basically universe in our soil structures. So those beautiful, um, oh, geez, what is the, the term I'm trying to, to get out? Uh, aggregation, that beautiful aggregation um, is what you don't want to break up because that's basically you're ripping apart the biology's home. So this one's not quite coming out as fast. So we're just going to give the little squeeze on each side, broke loose right away. And you can see the nice roots. And we're going to pop her right down in there and just bring the soil up around her. Now, you can, like a tomato plant, plant her a little bit deeper, and you will get roots that will come out of the side 
and you know just start uh, becoming new feeder roots but we're not going to worry about doing that so the only other thing guys that i i wanted to mention is um we are going to be cutting our mung bean and i'll just give you a scan over to where the mung bean is over there there's lots of it so we're going to be using that okay there we go we're going to be using that as um, a, our mulch so we're going to be cutting it down and spreading it out just covering the soil uh you know a little bit and that's going to give a food source for the biology that's in there to start being able to break those molecules out of the cell structure from um the components that we're putting in there and it's going to give us a, a an area where moisture isn't going to wick off the top of the soil so much so uh let's see yes <laughs> And Lily brings up a really good point here, guys. Ken, make sure you mark which plant is in which of those bags. And that's why I have, I'm actually leaving this in here until I can actually get a piece of paper, plastic sleeve, uh, put on the outside um, or something. Uh, I do have some uh, little uh, seed, you know, right on right on it to tell you what it is i do have some of those maybe we'll use that but uh, for right now i'm just going to leave the pot in there so i do make sure i know which is which um do you guys have any questions uh suggestions uh things you'd like to see things you'd like me to talk about uh I've been using the myco seems to make the roots nuts um yeah i actually have some old um mycorrhizae that i've had since i started growing and that's what uh five and a half six years ago um and i, ju I i've just kept it in in a, a glass jar so it's nice and sealed so no moisture etc gets into it i don't know how viable yeah viable it is and i'm really not going to worry about it like i said i'm going to be keeping these in these pots for for a while now if you know anything uh or if you learned anything about mycorrhizae it takes 90 days for that mycorrhizae to proliferate in your soil structure so we you can wait the the three months keep your plant in veg for three months and then you're going to have that proliferation where it's at a hundred percent most people aren't going to have that availability um uh, when they're using pots because of of the speed of the cycle and of course me most major grows are going to be throwing it in um trying to help things out not realizing maybe that you know that you know 90 days their plants are already being harvested but if you have a soil that you're not changing out okay then the mycorrhizae is there as long as you're keeping roots in the soil then all you can have to do like um, Tom Landry does in his horizontal soil beds is he's got the grassroots pots, the one gallons that have uh, no bottom on it. That's where he starts his clones or keeps his clones, gets them nice and healthy. And he just literally plops it on top of the soil and she just roots down and right into that mycorrhizae that's already in existence taps into the system instantly and bang like his plants are nice and happy so let's see you guys uh that's what happens <laughs> yeah bad dog hey shadow um so basically guys that's really is, is in how i do mine um there's lots of different methods that people use out there so as i said you know find those videos on transplanting and you know a lot of people do different plants different ways i've seen the korean natural farming crowd you know especially with the trees you take the the tree out you know wash the the roots down so they're not totally clean they're getting rid of all the biology um, except for what's inside of the the roots themselves and in the hairs, they're getting rid of the soil structure, and they're letting that dry out um, for you know a, a 
hour, two hours until, you know, the, the plant's starting to go, oh, my God, what's going on? And then they're spraying on a, an inoculation onto those roots. And then they're taking that. And one of the keys that people don't understand, especially if you have a clay-based soil, is you dig that hole, especially if you have a compacted layer, you're digging a pit where the water can sit in that pit because it can't drain through. So you're creating a little swimming pool uh, in your soil if you have a heavy clay base where the moisture can't go through. So a lot of times um, they talk about, you know, a, a wider hole, not very deep because you want your feeder roots are only going to be feeding in those few first couple of three, maybe four or five inches. That's where your feeder roots are going to be in your soil. Your deeper roots and are going to be going down to look for water. They're going to be going down to look for the other components they need that are in the deeper soil structures. And the plants know that at the top they're going to have the organics because that's what's coming down by Mother Nature, the, your leaves, etc. So that's the organic material your plants are, are really going to be looking for those roots um, the biology needs to break that material down give it to the plant that's what we talk about plants feeding plants so if you have that clay based soil you know you're better off to spread everything out so that those roots are in you know only the top four or five six inches and then put your soil on top or your organic whether you're using a mix of worm castings, compost, etc. That's that organic material in your plant, whether it's a tree, a cannabis plant, uh, a tomato plant, that's when it'll start putting the feeder roots out. It'll start putting the, the deeper roots down to give itself that strength and stability. But we're really focused on it feeding and being able to feed right away. Now, this pot is is not even six inches deep, or if it is, yeah, about six inches deep. We had it filled up to so maybe four inches. So really, the the transplant should be able to grab on and do very well in this five gallon pot. Eventually, we'll get some sevens, some tens. Try some different sizes. We will be doing some um, late Morrison horizontal pots. Um, that we will, won't have to rip anything out of. We'll just be cutting down, putting a, a new plant in beside the one that we've just taken out. And then that mycorrhizae is built in there. It's already there. The biology is in there. It's active. It's strong. It's, you know, ready to take another plant and just hook up and, and take off. And that should be the goal um, that we all have in our grow is to have that instant connection when you put that uh, seedling in or that clone in into that soil where she goes oh yeah baby this is what i want this is the biology that's great for me everything's here you know and and she can just you know sink in it it's it's like you know flowing into you know 20 lanes of traffic and everything just works perfect you just glide right in and everybody's motoring right along that's the kind of attitude that's the kind of thing we want and really your soil your fungal hyphae etc all of that is that super highway you know moving biology around moving nutrients around you know that's what we really want to keep and that's one of the main reasons i i believe that you know the no-till guys are really really um understanding now there's times where you're going to have to till if you're doing root vegetables you've got to pull that out just when you're seeding try not to disturb any more of the soil structure that's already there than you have to and uh, a knife cut is really heals a lot faster than if you took a spoon you know to your your arm and dug out a big you know, cut on your arm with a spoon, it's going to take a long time for that to patch itself up and heal properly where a straight cut or, or just a little hole where you can pop your seed in is going to allow the 
structure of the biology and the life that's already there to not have to rebuild. The less it has to rebuild, the faster it's going to interact with your, your plant, your biology that's already in your plant and is going to start feeding right away. So uh, let's see, Shadow Mac, do you have a question? Let's see here. Uh, Bam Endomix. Okay. Bam Endomix Bio, bio Egg Blends. Uh, yeah. In nature, these fungi forms mirror. Exactly. Yeah. And actually, I, I have, we have um, Bio Egg coming on with uh, Luna uh, this coming Thursday. And then I think the, I don't want to say the, no, it's the week after the 4th. So, it's in December, anything. Anyway, we have BioAg coming on uh, with Layton, so that should be a really interesting conversation as well. Uh, increasing the plants uh, available, yeah, exactly. And it's it, it really um, all boils down to that interconnection with the biology that exists in your plant and the biology that exists in the soil on on that side of it <clears throat> and of course the energetic side the woo woo side um you know keeping a positive attitude in your grow like i i come out here i put my computer on out here and i put on bird song and running water um you know because the the nature sounds i'm trying to uh produce those kind of frequency and vibration just like photons are a frequency of vibration a waveform sound is that as well a bird's call is is interacting with everything that's around it um and that's where you think you're you add insect frass into your mixture to get the chitinase to get the response well normally it would just be the bug landing on and starting to eat the plant and then it puts out signals both uh, uh, a frequency a vibration you know it puts out those signals to let the other plants around it know that it's being attacked and to promote you know the compounds that will stop that attack attack or help defend against it um that's one of the beauties of this is understanding our plants actually run on that energetic field as well as in the biological field just like we do um, our soul our spirit that's our energy that's who we are this physical form is really a, a bag of biology and a bunch of water <laughs> okay uh, so the more components and biology we put it into our system into our belly that gets out into our our physical form just like our plants form the healthier the cells that can be built as long as we're supplying the nutrients, the base building blocks that we need, our plants need, etc. So, uh, just gonna scan again here. Let's see. Uh, let's see. It seems to work by the next week. It's me, but I use every time I transplant. Uh, great right, white every two weeks. Yeah, the mycorrhizae. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, Energy Frequency Vibration by Nikola Tesla. Anyway, guys, I wanted to keep this fairly short. I've got uh, three more to transplant and then move them into to the grow. Give them a little bit of the uh, two cups of water on the bottom um, and maybe just a, a misting on the top. Uh, cut down the diacon radish. Add uh, some of that in as a, a green mulch. I'm going to be leaving a, a few in there to to grow out i'm going to try actually collecting seeds from the the plants that we have in here um and seeing if i can can do that uh as well so i don't have to buy seeds i have the seeds available and you know when my plant is say i'm five days from harvest i can sprinkle a whole bunch of seeds in my pot so that when i'm cutting down there's there's new growth already coming up from those seeds keeping the energy flow going and put my new clone into the soil and just uh as she takes off and the other uh plants are starting to get high 
then I can literally trim them down and use them as a green mulch as well. Uh, remember, feed plants, plants. Those are the components that the plants need. Uh, so I hope that sunflower isn't a giant. I think it might be. Well, it's the only one in that pot, silly lily. So uh, I don't see any questions, guys. Um, love you all. Remember to like and subscribe and share with your friends. And uh, if you want to buy us a coffee, we got the Patreon link in the description. Um, it really would help a, a great deal uh, to keep everything going and flowing here. So, uh, guys, peace out. And we'll see you on the next show on Monday, the OG's Power Hour. And we've got to be an uh, expert coming on on Monday with Layton. So just to let you guys know that, and we will see you all soon.